Hi, this is Mark Pritchard with a short video showing how you can use Jenkins Enterprise running on the CloudBees platform as a service uh, to manage mobile application builds. And in this case, uh, I'm going to start with an iPhone application, a version of the Stockfish Chess application. So here's the uh, Stockfish Chess iOS job, and let's look at the configuration for that. Now, uh, the first thing I want to point out is that the build itself needs to happen in a Mac OS environment and so I'm going to take advantage of Jenkins ability to work with remote slaves and in this case uh, I'm using my laptop, my MacBook as a slave and uh, I'm using this to connect to the Jenkins master which is running in the cloud and I can have multiple slaves running in this way. So once I've connected that up I can then uh, configure and manage the job entirely in the cloud using the CloudBees uh, PaaS. So here's the, the project Stockfish Chess iOS and uh, in constructing the, the build let's go through it. Uh, the first thing is I'm actually pulling this from uh, the project on GitHub and again you can see this or fork it if you want to, to work with it and it's a project here on uh, my GitHub here, Stockfish Chess iOS, and I have the webhooks configured so that whenever I make a change, whenever I push a change up to GitHub, that will automatically trigger the Jenkins build to run in the cloud. So if we come back to the configuration here, as I say, you can see that uh, we'll do a build whenever a change is pushed to GitHub, and then we're taking advantage of the uh, Jenkins Xcode plugin. So there are a number of settings here that I don't actually need. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this configuration, I'm going to do a release build, and then if we come down here, I'm going to set the version using, uh, partly using a, a macro built into Jenkins to automatically increment that build number. And then I'm going to build an IPA archive, and I'll show you the reason for that in a minute. Um, we're using the uh, certificates for the code signing from the keychain in the normal way. And then what we're going to do is, after the build is successful, uh, we're going to use, again, a, a fast archive plugin uh, to uh, create this uh, IPA archive, and that's going to do it using basically a, a sort of a delta, using an rsync style algorithm between the existing archive and anything that's changed. So that speeds up that operation quite dramatically when this is running over a network. And then I have a couple of plugins loaded to uh, work with uh, beta testing uh, management software. Uh, Appaloosa is one. In this case, I'm going to use TestFlight. And you can see here I've uh, created an account on TestFlight. I've got the, the, the CloudBees team on TestFlight. And you can see here that I've got a build of this application. This was the latest one that I did, 228, and we'll, we'll build 229 in a minute. And if you need to see the parameters that we put into this configuration, here's the team token. And if you come here, you can go to the link where you can get the API token as well. So let's just go back to the configuration. And you can see that I'm going to pick up the, uh, the IPA archive that is built using the uh, local workspace. And remember, we're working off a, a remote slave. So if I just uh, open this up, you'll see I give a, a sort of working directory for the slave process called, this is just Jenkins. You can see here the various runtime jars that are needed. And then we have a workspace for each of the various projects that can be built on this machine via the slave. and you'll see down here that we're going to uh, build, we have the, the project workspace, and we're going to build the application. Here was the latest release, Stockfish release 228, and at the end, we're going to see that replaced with 229. And then what will happen is, provided the build is successful, we're automatically going to push that up to test flight for me to be to test, and I'll show you that uh, on an iPad, which I have connected here. So that's the configuration. Let me just run a build. Uh, as I say, I, I'm not to save time, I'm not going to bother to push a code change into GitHub. Uh, but you'll see now that the, uh, the build is scheduled and running. 
This is all done using on-demand resources in the cloud. That's the beauty of, of running Jenkins uh, using the PaaS services. So we can go here and we can see the builds kicked off automatically. Essentially any uh, bits, any code that's required will be downloaded to the workspace on the remote slave, which is the macOS environment where we're actually doing the Xcode build. You can see the build happening here. So the, the actual compilation phase has all succeeded and now uh, it's building up the IPA archive that we're going to use for uh, testing and distribution. So the actual uh, uh, testing uh, has run now and we're actually going to build the, the archive. If I come on down, you can see this is the advantage of the fast archive plugin in that uh, what would otherwise be a very lengthy operation happens really quite quickly here. And we've come all the way down, we've built that archive and it's been uh, uploaded to the test flight service. So our build is successful. And if we come back up to the top, we can see that is the, uh, the status. So the build has been successful and we've also now made this available to test flight. So let me go to the test flight console. You can now see that we've automatically uploaded build number 229. Let me just click on that. I'm going to give myself uh, access to that build as a beta tester. So let me just give myself an update. I could also send an email in that way. So you can see that I've been working with 227 and 228, but now I've got the new version. So what I'm going to do is just pop this down and I'm using an air server here to show you the iPad. Uh, this is actually an iPhone application, but I'm using an iPad to show this. Let me go to test flight. So if I just load up test flight, you'll see we now have the new version 229. I can click on that and uh, get all the details. I can go ahead and install the new version. And if I just come here, you'll see the version of Stockfish down the bottom just loading. And as you can see, I, I have examples here that use both Appaloosa and TestFlight. So it depends which of those services you find most appropriate to your needs. So the application is installing now. Just give it a second, there we are. Here's Stockfish and I can now run up. And as I say, here's the, the iPhone application. And of course I can now work with it and start testing and playing the game and so on. So that was just a short video to show you how uh, easy it is to use Jenkins to manage these um, mobile application scenarios. Here we looked at a, a, an iPhone on iOS build and in the next video I'll show you how to do the same thing for Android. Thank you.